Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nutanix VP and GM, IoT and AI, Satyam Vagani. Hi folks. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to day two here at Nutanix.next 2019. Did you guys enjoy the party last night? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yay! Yeah, me too. Uh, as you can see, it worked out pretty well for me. Uh, you know, picked up a Mother's Day gift. Uh, this will work, right? Uh, no, you know, it, this belongs to a colleague. We can't find him since last night, so, you know. I guess I uh, didn't like the guy anyway. But enough of this. <laughs> uh, so if you uh, turn to Chapter 7 in your textbooks, kids, uh, and you'll see that the world is changing. This is data from the last five years. And you see that people are getting less curious about concepts that they really understand well, things like virtual machines and virtualized workloads. And they are getting more curious about uh, new concepts, things like containers and AI and so on. Now, this is playing out in the real world. You know, more than six in 10 enterprises are switching over from monolithic application architectures to microservices-based architectures. More people are going to school to learn about AI. More VCs are investing in it. And so we are going to switch our focus from gathering data to getting insights out of that data. And more and more applications are now becoming truly hybrid. They run not just in a single data center, but across multiple clouds, you know, all the way from the edge to the core to the cloud. IoT is a good example. You know, IoT applications process 40 times more data or will process 40 times more data next year on the edge than in the cloud. So all in all, what this means is <clears throat> we are going to see a massive shift. We think the mission-critical workloads of tomorrow are going to look very different from the mission-critical workloads of today. Apples and oranges. And so we need to do something about these oranges. And to tell you what it is, let me use IoT as an example, because most IoT applications fall in the oranges category. And specifically, I'm going to share two examples with you. One is with a Fortune 500 manufacturing customer of ours. They were doing a smart factory. And the idea was to source data from their machines and from cameras at the factory, run it through some AI, models to figure out if a machine is going to fail or to do visual product inspection. And to do that, we gave them a highly portable pass stack, which they ran at the edge at the factory. And it enabled them to run their containerized AI applications at every factory in the world. They have thousands of them to process the data and get insights. And their operators and developers could manage this massively distributed planet scale infrastructure all from a central point of control, which was Xi IoT. Now, this is a very standard IoT use case. And there are advanced ones, like this one at Compass Group. It's a Fortune 500 food services company. They run 55,000 uh, cafeterias and restaurants around the world. And this is what we did for them. Roll the video, please. So as simple as that, Amazon Go for restaurants, they run it in production. And so this is a very advanced IoT use case. They have created a brand new experience 
using IoT, something that was not possible before, and AI. Same blueprint across standard use cases or very advanced ones. But as we did this with many customers, you know, we learned one key thing, is if we could enable a rapid development environment for IoT, we would let many more enterprises and many more end users undertake this journey with a much higher level of confidence, much higher probability of success. So that was the mission we were working on for the last six months, to create step zero. And specifically, it requires us to solve three problems. Is problem number one is about the platform. How can we make it, make it such that any IoT developer can start building an IoT application without having to worry about infrastructure first? Problem number two is applications. Is these IoT applications are very complicated. They are very vertical specific. So how is it that we can create uh, a, a, a massive repository of applications, IoT applications that are available to developers to build off of. And number three was data. Every enterprise use case needs special data from their own context, like the food tray that you saw on the compass example. How can we make it very simple to acquire that data uh, on behalf of the IoT developers? So let me start with the platform problem. Yeah, I'm very happy to announce that starting now, today, we are going to make a full-fledged IoT stack available in the cloud for any developer to use. We call it the Xi IoT Cloud Instance. Now, the way it works is it's a Nutanix-hosted pass in the cloud for IoT. And any application that you write using Xi IoT can run either on the cloud or on any of the edges that you choose to deploy. And this thing is available right now for people to try out at iot.nutanix.com. So thanks. Easy peasy. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's problem number one, the platform. And before I go on, let me invite two great friends, Augusta from Diplomatic and Mahesh from Nutanix, folks. Good morning, Sajjan. How are you? Welcome. Good morning, Mahesh. Good morning. So guys, maybe I'll start with you, Augusta. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about Diplomatic? Sure. So Diplomatic is a software enabling any company to build applications easily based on video recognition. So for instance, Compass built on Diplomatic the food recognition algorithms. It was a great partnership, right? Right. Uh, you know, machine vision ought to be everywhere. Why is it so hard? Machine vision is easy to prototype, but very hard to operate at scale. Because in production, you still need to improve your algorithm, train your algorithm through the management of thousands of feedback loops between your central training system and your thousands of cognitive applications deployed at the edge. We created Diplomatic to simplify that workflow. So let's have a demo. Can we see it? Yeah. Sure. OK. So first, please imagine that you are a TV manufacturer and you want to create a new generation of TV that you can control with your hand. Let's train a gesture recognition customized model. Before we go there, Augusta, the other demo screen, please. Sure. The other demo screen, please. How do you say it in Should French? Arrive in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There you go. All right. So um, I'm going to record a little video to feed my data set here, because training neural network is, is about showing examples. So Let's say that this gesture is for, I want to post the movie. And let's say that this gesture means I want to switch off the TV. Once it's done, I send it to Diplomatic Studio. So the studio is the place where you can manage data, manage images, label, train your own networks. You go and you can see that images, the video I just uh, recorded was decomposed into frames. And here, I can 
take several frames. I'm going to label those frames. So frames. So I'm attributing the right tag. Here it is pause the movie. And the other gesture was is going to trigger switch off the TV. All right. So switch off the TV. Once you have a, a bunch of images representing each action that you want to train, all you need to do is go to that section, click on that button. OK. It's my first model. And that's it. You have just created your very first customized video recognition application. And you can deploy it on thousands of devices through Xi IoT. This, what you need to remember, it is that you can do that in less than two minutes on a click-based interface and without being an AI expert. Thank you. That was great. Thanks, Augusta. So, the, you know, just to summarize, Augusta uh, trained the computer to understand two concepts that it doesn't quite do so far. And Wiley used the TV application, which hopefully everyone relates to. Uh, you can imagine this can potentially be an application for a retail store, you know, to summon customer service or in an oil rig or a factory and so on. So, very widely ac applicable. This is an example. Now, the model is trained. It's time to uh, deploy the application. Uh, we saw the orange part of the whole cycle. We trained the model, uploaded it to Xi IoT. And to deploy the application, we have made it extremely easy for creators to uh, distribute these kind of applications uh, uh, you know, extremely widely to our end users through our platform. Uh, we call it the Xi IoT app library. And Mahesh will lead us through the details. Certainly, Satyam. Can we switch to this laptop? Excellent. So what we are looking at here is the Xi IoT Cloud dashboard. And if you can look over here, you see that there are a few applications already deployed on this particular account. All users who sign up for the account, uh, sign up for the service, will have these applications deployed as well. Let's take a look at a deeper, take a look at the application library itself. As you can see, the library already includes the Depomatic apps. There are some apps that were developed by Nutanix, and the applications developed by uh, your developers will also go in this library. Let's take a look at the Depomatic app in detail. As you can see, this particular app has three containers, and it's already running in the Xi Cloud. So what the application library will do is it allows our users to play around with these applications, but they can also use these as building blocks to create some of their new applications as well. It's as simple as that. Uh, you know, the application almost looks very trivial, but this can run at planet scale if uh, Mahesh wants to. So the last thing to do now is we have the application running. It's going to now understand what people are doing, and we need to feed it data. And so we've solved the application problem. Now to feed it data, you know, uh, like any proud IoT developer, you know, you need a camera, and I have one, uh, obviously based on the Raspberry Pi, which is apparently the IoT standard. So, you know, it looks like this. It's pretty simple. You know, all I need to plug in and pray a little bit. Uh, you know, two problems here is it sometimes works. And uh, two, uh, you know, it might keep you single for a long amount of time. So you could do that, or you could use the Xi IoT sensor, which is an application. Uh, it converts any smartphone into an IoT sensor. Mahesh is using it right now uh, and relaying live video data into the Depomatic application running in the cloud for it to uh, do some inferences. You can see the inferences happening right there on your demo screen. So it's as simple as that, a full-fledged AI application. So as you can see, this is extremely easy to use. We are actually feeding the inf uh, Augustine's gestures to the cloud. The cloud is doing the inference, and then we are playing back that on the uh, laptop here. Great. I'm going to stop this for now. Uh, so as pleased as we are to announce the Xi IoT sensor today, 
The thing that really excites me is the custom connectors we built that made this sensor possible. We now allow users to extend our platform by writing custom connectors. What that does is it makes our platform use newer protocols and newer sensors going forward. And just like the application library, these custom connectors will be available to our customers. So they can stop worrying about protocols and start innovating. Great, Mahesh. Do we have any other sensors running out in the wild? Oh. All right, looks yeah. like it'll take some time. Uh, anyway, thanks, thanks yep. very much, guys. See you. So that was the app library. And the last thing uh, about this is you know, we are very humbled um, to have uh, Diplomatic and many other partners around the world support us uh, in this new initiative. Here's one uh, from uh, America and Japan. It's Tokyo Electron Device. Roll the video, please. One of our solutions, CXM, is an AI ML predictive maintenance software will be posted on Zai IoT Marketplace in this summer. It provides quickly and easily modeling application deployment and secure system management. It certainly brings unprecedented experiences to the customers. So all in all, uh, we think Zai IoT can potentially be the YouTube for IoT applications. We want to bring together creators and users. We want to make it extremely easy for creators to create extremely rich IoT applications, non-trivial applications and to distribute them very widely. And we want to let users consume these applications through the Xi IoT system and to take their IoT projects from ambition to action as soon as possible. Which brings me back to the apples and oranges. We've done a lot of work last year, folks, uh, to get ready for the world on the right. We now have a new platform for these new generation applications, hybrid applications. And in creating that platform, we have solved not just for operators, but also for developers. And we have found new ways to, to let partners deliver differentiation on top of our platform through technology. So that's Zai IoT. It's time to get ready for the world of oranges. It's time to make orange juice. And everything you need to do so is right here. Thank you. Thanks, folks.